Today on Nerdy Gritty, with Farming Simulator being the next big esports thing, what other unlikely games can be great esport leagues? Hello everybody and welcome back to the Nerdy Gritty where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I'm Fox. I'm Dez. Hey Fox, yes. something magical happened recently. <laughs> something incredible that nobody, like, I mean... It's kind of like uh, there have been rumors of it maybe possibly happening, but when it actually happened, it was just like, what? Okay. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 actually released. What? Yeah, I know. Oh, I, thought that was, I thought everybody <laughs> on Earth was playing a practical prank on me. <laughs> right? Big practical joke, and it ain't, it's still another 20 years away. Unpopular opinion. You ready for this? Uh, it's fine. It's trying too hard. It's trying too hard. It's I trying can see that so. Being a thing. It's fun. No, uh, I'm gonna give it this. It's fun, and I'm loving it. It's great. The yeah. story is as convoluted as Kingdom Hearts. I think always Kingdom Hearts is. Two was trying too hard. But oh no, oh my gosh. But this I mean, is... comparatively, this might be doing even more. Kingdom Hearts looks two is tame. But I think two compared... was trying too hard. The, trying this one too hard. Ha, nice. This one's trying three hard. Oh my gosh. No, it's it's uh, exponential. This one's trying yeah. 67 hard Well, what or do you mean? Like story-wise or just no, like the crazy? Spectacle. Oh, I'm fine with that. Oh, again, I love like I said, spectacle. It it's but it's to the point that it's getting old. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Like I'm about 7 hours into gameplay yeah. of, of what's probably going to be a 35 40 hour game. Something like that. And uh I, I'm it, I'm skipping so spectacle ha- spectacle now. Oh really? I, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so like there's... I have the option for spectacle, and I'm like, nah. Is it like shortened like summon? Okay, remember and... when we were doing the demo uh, at yeah. at um, whatever, right. and there was that huge like crazy thing where the train came out, and I was shooting fireworks right. at the guy from the train. That's a normal thing you can do. You right? can do that every single combat. So yeah, but I'm still playing it, and just so you guys know, uh, I will start releasing videos probably pretty soon here, yep. uh, maybe next week or something to that nature, speaking, so maybe the week you're hearing this. Speaking of videos that we're going to be releasing soon, so I have a lot of videos saved up. <laughs> hey, did you finally give up on Dragon Quest? 5% give up. I'll do it eventually. Okay. But I have very little in the game left, so I just have to do it. Right. I basically have the final boss. I mean, I I don't, I don't blame you. Here's that is a he, long it freaking is. game. It's a really great game, though. Here's the problem. I have one battle left, but I have to grind out about 15 levels before I'm even mm. capable of taking them down. I'll get there eventually, but I've been... I actually mentioned it in the very first episode of um, Nier Autom- Automata. Right. That's like, this is a game called Nier Automata, also known as me procrastinating with Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> no, okay, so, speaking of you putting videos up of yep. a game you started playing. You have a lot. I have Spyro. Yep. One, two, two three, three, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. Oh, yeah. All of the first story of Nier Automata now, I finished that. Um, I'm ten episodes into The Messenger. Which is an incredible game. Yeah, it is. I'm good, loving good. the messenger. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out soon. Um, I'm going to start. Uh, oh, I have all of Just Cause Four. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff, so I'm going to start posting it. Um, pretty soon. Uh, pro- starting next week, probably with Just Cause Four. But uh, yeah, so I've been playing some stuff. I played Near Automata. I started it Saturday, or f- yeah, I started it. No, I started it Friday night. This is we're recording Thursday. Uh, of week A or week B, week A, the week before, I started it Friday night and I finished it two days ago. <laughs> wow! Just the main, just the first main story. Okay. There are three main storylines. It's basically the same story, but you play it from different characters' perspe- perspectives. But uh, so I played the entire first one. Um, did some side quests, but not a lot. I mm. basically just stuck right. to the story. All right. So it's not like I crammed a lot in there. I just yeah. finished part of it. Anyway. It was fun to play. The uh, there was some really cool, innovative like perspective shifts that they put in there. So the game just shifted between like bullet bullet hell shoot 'em up and action RPG on the fly, pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much just in like certain sections. Like if you were just running through like the open world. There wouldn't really be the the unless you were in very specific areas. It was pretty much all an action RPG like sl- uh, hack and slash kind of game. Yeah. Um. But it was really fun combat. Um. Really fun to play. 
but the story made no sense. Yeah, I was real disappointed. Interesting. Um, yeah, and also I just don't like anime exaggerative exaggeration. Yeah, and that was there was a lot of that. Yeah, and, and, and I think a big char- a part of this is you're typically not the demographic for a game like this. No, I'm not really the target audience. Yeah, I just that'd be I got more, it on Black Friday for like fifteen bucks because I heard house. it was good and yeah. I wanted to try it out, and I'm glad I did, but disappointed. Yeah, the fact that I had to describe to you earlier what Cruel Angel's thesis yeah. is shows that I'm more the demographic yeah, it's not and really you are not. Yeah. yeah, not really my, 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 my jam. Well, I, on the other hand, uh, just the reason we didn't have a podcast last week is yes. I had a pretty major surgery and I was on bed rest for Yeah, that's about, why we're back. Yeah, we're, ha, ah, nice. Because he had, had a back, back surgery. surgery. Uh, I was on bed rest for several days, uh, five or six days. And um, because of that, I got to watch all of the movies and shows all of them um i finished uh daredevil season three and binge watched and watched the entirety of punisher season two and also caught up on some uh of the animated dc movies okay and i watched a crap ton of other movies as well including incredibles 2 which is out on netflix now Ah. um which is not as good as i remember it it's still very good. Yeah. It's a great movie, but it's just it doesn't have the same impact that the first movie did. No, but it's, it's sequel, again, it's really movies, hard to compare. Sequels rarely do. Yeah, and, and Incredibles, the first Incredibles was a, we've said this before, a near perfect movie. It's a masterpiece. You know I mean? Yeah, it really is. It's phenomenal. So anyway, uh, I, I'm gonna I want to quickly hit all of these things, okay. but Daredevil season three was spectacular. Okay, so good. All right, shocked me that it was canceled. Um, they bring back Kingpin and they have him a lot in this. Oh, uh, and his storyline is pretty like, like thick that, through this. I like that guy, Kingpin. As well as there's a lot of talk of faith in it, which as a Christian that was really cool to me. And like sure. they addressed it really, really well. Also, like yeah. they didn't just make it cheesy and dumb. They really addressed what it's like to struggle with your faith and to struggle okay. in something that you actually believe in, but also don't feel like he's doing enough and mm. and what it means to be a good god gotcha. and so it's it's done really really well punisher season two was just disappointing to me really okay yeah. I'm ju- i'll jump in here i'm seven episodes in the very last thing that happened possible spoilers is well prop potential because it's only been out for a couple weeks but yeah uh frank just encounter like had his confrontation with Billy for the first time in, in in real life when he goes out in the street and he pulls off his jacket. Yeah, and he has, that's a good moment. Yeah, I really loved how that's they how moment. they brought back the like because the skull doesn't make sense just on its own. Right, it would just be like oh, it's because that's what he wears. Right, but no, it does make sense in this, and it makes more sense in this because it's like a trigger for Billy Russo. I really love that. But that's where I am. That's the end of the episode that I've watched. That might be the peak moment for me. I really? Think it, I think that may be everything downhill from there. Okay. And I'm not going to – do you mind if I talk about it or do you want to just I would rather yourself? you not spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. talk about why. You can talk about why you're disappointed. Okay. Um, it splits its purpose a lot. So the whole Billy Russo thing and then everything with um, the the girl – Yeah. Um, they never cross over. Okay. That's, that's disappointing because there are essentially two storylines. Yep. Yes. And Frank is right is a part of both of them. Yep. And, and they should coincide at some point. And they never have anything to do with each other. And because of that, um, he's back and forth a lot. Frank yeah. Castle is back yeah, and yeah, forth yeah, a yeah. lot. Like which is more important, right? Right. Now? What are you doing in this and why are you doing this? And then than I won't the spoil thing. anything, so I'll say uh, a couple of points in the story to me were just a little disappointing on how they came out, what they worked okay. out. I really like what they tried to do, what they're trying to do, uh, you know, since you're watching it now, uh, with Giving him this fatherly instinct again, giving him I mean, a that, child to protect. Generally, that's a real easy way to make your your to give a real emotional core to your right. story. Think God of War, think Logan, and uh, I think that they did a pretty good job with that. I okay, so here's some things that I've enjoyed it. I love the Punisher, and okay, so we're going through a thing at church right now where we kind of confront some like what's called strongholds, just kind of like things that we don't like to get rid of in our life. I don't want to go into details, but right. uh, part of me is that I'm not a very graceful filled person. And I think that's why I might like Punisher because I love that. He's just like, no, this is how it is. You did a bad thing. It's yeah. over. You, you know, you deserve this. Yep. Uh, and so I do love Punisher, um, but I also love his portrayal in this because he's not just action, kill everybody, man. He's really good. Right. In this. Yeah. And the actor um, does a great job as yeah, well. John Bernthal is great. I love him as an actor. Um, but a few things I love. Uh, it's not Punisher wasn't like this either. Some of the Netflix shows get like, there's some, there's some sex scenes and they get pretty, uh, 
like on a regular basis essentially like yeah. that happens in like Luke Cage I think or no 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 more in um uh Jessica Jones I think um for me actually I think the most graphic was Punisher season 1 was it with uh, Billy Russo and uh, oh, detective yeah, 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 the, yeah, 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 the, yeah, not yeah. detective I guess that's true Homeland yeah. Security girl yeah, yeah. they had a few is. pretty graphic that's ones that's true in there. a couple of times all of them have this yeah. this one does a ca- uh, twice so far for uh one of them's a flashback about that. The yep. other one's at the very first the episode, very first th- which, which I think a, that's a tasteful one because it's was, actually it's starting off saying like showing that he's trying he's to trying back to, to normal connect with somebody. Yeah, again. he's trying to do but this again. They've there's been two relationships where I expected things to happen. Okay, so the whole fatherly thing with the girl, I love that. I love that storyline, but also. Like, I was worried that they were going to, like, overly sexualize her. Like, she's, like, this chameleon, and she can... And they don't. Not at all. At Up to this point, there's been one moment where she uses her sexuality a little bit to get into, like, this... Uh, and not even, like... It, no, it's, it's not, not even really... She she's just wearing a certain outfit. Which uh, makes is the not, guy assume that yes, she's and a is not sex revealing. Worker. Not at all. It is simply just a certain outfit that, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You want to come in here, so let... Right. Yeah. And then... Uh, one big thing that I've really, or the little moment that, not big thing, little moment that kind of encapsulated this, like, we don't have to be, uh, we don't have to exploit this kind of stuff, is when she, that same character, is, they've got this plan, they're gonna try to get this guy, uh, a, a mob boss, essentially, isolated from his people, and she poses as a waitress, gives him a message, walks out and his you know bodyguards are following trying to ca- get her and she basically quickly changes into a schoolgirl uniform right but like a you know not like a sexual school year just like the An uniform of a school, school. Yeah, yeah yeah but what she does is she has a reversible skirt that she's wearing with with like tights or leggings underneath and when she takes that off and reverses it and puts it back on it's entirely below the camera yep which i was like you, I know what happened. I didn't need to see, you know, just her wearing leggings, like, or whatever. Like, it was just a, a moment where they could have just shot it and, like, ah, look at that. Attractive they, they lady doing a thing. Absolutely, And yeah. they didn't. And I really love that moment. Um, there's been some really cool action scenes, I think. That, I mean, there's always going to be great action oh, scenes. Oh, sure, yeah. Sure. they're re- Well, they're real good. I mean, they're just – Netflix – the Netflix Marvel Marvel partnership has resulted in a lot of cool action scenes. Oh yes, but there was like that standoff at the police station was a really good time. But I've enjoyed it. But yeah, it already feels like it should have ended, not because the story <laughs> has gone on too long, but it feels like well, you probably just could have ended it. Like it feels like the story should be shorter. At this point, I don't know. It feels like a whole another five Watch or six it. episodes. And I'll say there, there are some things that you may disagree with me wholeheartedly. Okay, sure. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, the other two things I want to hit real quick are um, number one, uh, are two Batman movies that I watched. So okay. the Batman animated movies from DC. One is Batman: Bad Blood, and the other one is Batman: Harley Quinn. Oh, okay. So um, Justice League Dark, I looked for like really uh, hard, but it's not on any streaming service that I have. I was hoping you were you were going to say Batman Ninja and Batman. I haven't seen that either. Gotham, Dang. Gotham by Gaslight. Which oh, is when he fights yeah. Jack the Ripper in the in the uh, Victorian era. Man, there's so many good ones. Out Those right are now. the two that sound more interesting to me because they're like specific situations with Batman instead of just uh, Batman Bad Blood. Yeah, was okay. Yeah, that was one that was a little disappointing. Um, this is one where, uh, like, a guy comes in called the Heretic, and he somehow finds out Batman's secret, but it turns out he's actually linked with Talia Al Ghul and big conspiracy and whatever yeah it's you know, just it's a, a, I'm, I'm, a you've already told me i don't want to watch this. it's a try hard movie yeah and, it's and it okay. just sounds like it's been done before yeah and it's it, more than anything it's a try hard to be a edgy movie yeah like it tries real hard and it's not great yeah batman and harley quinn was fantastic okay i loved it and mostly i loved it as because the whole thing is an homage to um, the 90s Batman the Animated yeah, Series. Yeah, it has like a similar animation style, right? Oh, Bruce Timm. It yeah. is Bruce Timm, okay, yeah. yeah. And it's Kevin Conroy. And oh, nice. it's Yeah, and it's um, the same guy who does Nightwing's voice. I can't remember his name. Joe. Well, um, I, that actually might be Joe something. Joe Nightwing. It might be John Joe something. Chill. I can't remember. Anyway, so it's Joe Chill. Yes, the man who killed <laughs> Bruce Wayne's parents. Yep. Um, but the whole premise to this is uh, Poison Ivy is up to something that's like world's 
destroying type of thing. She's, she's trying to merge human and humans and plants, but there's a big chance that might just kill all the humans and turn them into plants, which she'd be fine with. Sure. She's also working with Woodrow, uh, the Floronic Man. Yeah, that guy. But uh, another uh, deep, obscure DC deep cut, guy. Deep cut villain. Yeah. Uh, Woodrow, Ivy, and Swamp Thing are kind of the trifecta of the Earth the nature, people, the nature people the green. in DC. Yeah. So anyway, uh, because it's Ivy that's doing it, they're like, well, we need somebody who's connected with Ivy. The only person we know is Harley Quinn, but she's out of Arkham and she's gone straight and she's trying to be good again. <laughs> Not and in so, every sense of the word though. <laughs> so they, they find her and they have to get her to help. And of course she wants to be Harley Quinn, not Harleen Quinzel to do right. this. And uh, it, it's the whole movie to me is as if Harley Quinn was telling it from her perspective, huh. because there are just some goofy moments that, are kind of out of Batman's character or out of character for Nightwing or whatever. But, and it probably even have actually happened that way, but if Harley Quinn were retelling you the story, that is exactly how she would have told it. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> it's it's goofy. It's irreverent in some ways. Again, it's all very, very much Harley Quinn. And it's also uh, a homage because it gives these great callbacks to the animated series, including there's a bar on the outskirts of Gotham that uh, is basically the henchman bar. And they walk in and all, all he says, is, yeah, all the hench henchmen hang out there and you walk in there. And if you're a guy who's seen the entire animated series 53 times, like I have, sure. I got to, I knew exactly yep. who each and every henchman was, what episode they were in, what <laughs> they were doing. And like, it was so cool. And it was kind of funny to me. Cause I'm like, some of them like, Hey, wait, he was a robot. <laughs> why, why is he dancing a at a club if he was a robot? You know, so, no, it was, it was real, real good. It was a lot of fun. It was, it made you laugh a lot. Right. And I laugh out loud sometimes. Cool, cool. And so, yeah, I highly recommend that. Well, anyway, uh, we've been talking for a really long no, that's time. Fine. Well, it's been two weeks, and we yes. spend a lot of our time doing these things. So. Yes, uh, So, so but that's to, okay. That's I what mean, we have. I have more I could say, but I have more I could say, too. We don't need to. Uh, that's why I'll have my our edited version and our unedited version. <laughs> yes, so. That, yes. So speaking of which, we're gonna get down to the nerdy gritty. But first, but first, a quick message from us. Uh, we uh, are doing as as uh, Des just mentioned, edited and unedited versions, or at least uh, what are we calling them? Um, director's a director's cut version. Yep. Uh, which is our whole entire conversation, everything that we've talked about up till now. If you are not listening to that, then there's been some things cut out of this. Um, this is something that we're doing for our patrons. That's right. We now have a Patreon, uh, and if you are a patron at the second tier or higher, then you get access to the director's cut of our conversations here in the Nerdy Gritty. Which let's just be clear here. Uh, we don't edit anything out of our actual topic. Yeah. What, um, what unless we go on is. some tangent that has nothing to do with it, uh, our entire conversation is still in there. So you're not missing out on that. But if you like listening to us rant about whatever junk we got up to that week, uh, then there's a whole lot more. So uh, I don't know how much time you have heard now, but we are edit like we are at. 35 minutes of yeah, conversation you will right not, now. You will, yeah, if you are listening to the regular edition, yeah, you, then you, you will not be at 35 minutes <laughs> no. on your timer. So, uh, yeah, so jump on our Patreon, our second, uh, get on Currently our second it's tier. Currently, it's $5. It's 5 bucks. That's $60 a year. So, I mean, it's literally just like, hey, you know what? I'm going to skip out on playing this one game, or at least buying this one game sure. new so I can support you guys yeah. for an entire year. And, that, and that'll go toward, um, like, being able to do more of this. We're, we're having our... Um, uh, the Nerdy Gritty is going up on podcast sites now. It's currently available uh, on uh, SoundCloud uh, as well as Spotify. Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher, yes. That's a pretty popular one. We're looking at iTunes, but they, they're they not the easiest. No. Like, it's a little more – you have to, like, do some extra stuff. We're working on it. But, yeah, so go ahead and uh, if you're able to, uh, support us on Patreon. Thank you very much. So, down to the Nerdy Gritty. Yes. Not too long ago, uh, a pretty big event happened, a totally random event. It's awesome. There was an eSports competition for Farming Simulator 2018, correct? Is it 2018? I'm looking it up right now. It might have been 2019. Farming Simulator. Yes. It was the game. It doesn't matter if it's 18 right. or 19. It's farming. If you don't know what Farming Simulator is, uh, first of all, 
if you're not sure about simulation games, I recommend that you go to it is our YouTube channel. Yes. And you check out Euro Truck Simulator. We <laughs> played that for one episode or two episodes or whatever. I think it was one. Yeah. And it was ridiculous. It was the simul. It was a simulator like simulator games if you don't know are as granular and the more granular you can be the better yeah trying to be are. as uh true to the experience of whatever you're simulating as possible uh which i have played less than two hours of farming simulator 18 i know that it was less than two hours because i got a steam refund on it <laughs> <laughs> uh and it is a farming simulator. <laughs> it's literally planting seed yes. and and cultivating those plants yes. and then harvesting and then selling. Harvesting, like moving moving the certain parts of your of your tractor so that you can put the grain in the other thing and then moving that thing over to the place where yeah, you let's can transfer clear. it into This is not Stardew Valley. No. This is you have to learn how to drive a tractor yes and control all of its mechanisms and move them in the right order so that you don't just dump your grain onto the ground then drive to the store sell what you've grown be able to invest that into new equipment uh like it's it's very much uh a realistic as far as i know simulation of farming so there was an esports competition, and the yeah. whole idea of it was they were given a certain amount of time, and it was who could make the most money in that amount of time. Yeah. Now, you may think that sounds ridiculous, and it kind of is. It is a little bit. Because here's the thing. What this tells me and what this tells Fox and I is that esports are something that are absolutely taking hold in the world. Well, they've taken hold for a while now. This right. is it ex expanding. Yes. It's not just... It is becoming a, a pretty, like, regular thing. Right. In the same way that when basketball was huge, like, that whole trampoline basketball became a <laughs> yeah, thing yeah, for a while. Well, yeah. When football was huge, the XFL came out. Right now, esports is huge, and we're seeing some weird outliers yeah. popping up. Farming Simulator E-League is probably not going to be the next Fortnite E-League or, or whatever, <laughs> whatever game you want to put in there. But it is something that uh, it has... More than two hundred and eighty thousand dollars in prizes. It's not just some weird guy at his his like uh you know his esports bar did a competition one time. This is a major event, right? So or a league, not even event. It's a league. It's a league. This got Fox and I thinking to ourselves: What other video games could make some pretty great? esports competitions yeah uh i mean partially i wanted to talk about this because um i don't play multiplayer games right and i mean i'm not really interested in being like an esports player but i don't play those games and i could try but it just feels like i'd be starting you know way behind and really never be able to catch up but there are games that i play that i'm real good at that don't have them all. So how could we, how could I get in the eSports League without having to put too much effort into it? So there is a lot of thought between the two of us on <laughs> what types of games, whether they be yes. ridiculous or whether they be awesome, yes. that could come out as genuine eSports things. And we each have some ideas. Right. I have three specific off the top of my head that Me I too. want to go. I have three, three too. Okay, so we'll see how we go. We're going to start, though, uh, specifically with uh, Dark Souls. Because we both have an idea for Dark Souls. Oh, okay. You told cool. me about yours. I have a different one, but let's start with that. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to bring up is Dark Souls. <laughs> now, this is uh, one that I think, or Bloodborne, the you know, Blood Souls from uh, software. Soulsborne. Called Soulsborne. Sure, Soulsborne. So right now, there is the ability in Souls games, if you didn't know this, to invade another player. Yes. And have a combat, a, a player versus player combat. And, in fact, in Bloodborne, there is a kind of arena-like thing that you can do in which you are specifically going to an area just to combat people. I think it would be an incredible esports league to watch. I, I, I would be all about this. It'd be fun. If the only thing, like the only rule is you have to be matching levels. Okay. But like actual soul level? Soul level. Okay. Yeah, that's it. But your build can be entirely different. Whatever you want. Your your armor can be anything from the game, or maybe you have specific like um limitations that everybody has to meet. Sure. But at the end of the day, you go toe to toe, yeah. head to head. And you that's just, it. You just fight each other in the Dark Souls style. 
And, oh, man, and more than anything, I would like to see team events like that. Okay. So a way in which you could have, you know, a three-on-three, and you have your tank, and you have your ranged Mm, guy, and you have your DPS guy to be able to run in there and strategically take care of this. It would be entirely different than playing the game itself. Well, sure. Because you, your whole goal now is to strategically is work to together as other a team Dark and Souls fight other people. Players. I'm getting hyped about it, like <laughs> literally as I'm talking yeah, th- about it. Yeah, this could be cool because you could have arenas that take advantage of, like, like you could fight in certain areas of the game. Like, you could put invisible walls, but the, so you could take advantage of, you have to also pay attention to where you're moving. Because you can fall off a cliff, or you can fall off a cliff and die. Or, right. you know... Archers are shooting into the arena, too, so you have oh, to watch out cool. for them. Or maybe it's, like, in an area that has a dragon overhead. Like, maybe you're on, uh, in the first Dark Souls, on the there's bridge. that bridge, and the dragon just breathes fire in it every, every once, once in a while. Every once in a while, and you have to get to safety. Like, yeah. yeah, and so, like, you might be problems. mid-combat, combat, and you then all of a sudden, everyone just oh, right. runs, scatters, scatters Scat- and then comes back together, yeah. you know? Uh, and it, I, the way I see it is you, it's um, three-on-three teams, but each player comes with three characters, and oh, okay. they do two out of three rounds, and each round, you can choose any character you want. Now, everybody is aware of everybody else's players. Okay. So, before you even arrive, you've chosen your three players, your nine players for your team, your nine characters for your team, and then when you arrive, you receive the other uh, team's list, and so you can study them, you can look at them, you can develop a strategy. Okay. You don't know which one they're going to pick per round, though. Sure. You have no idea. You can guesstimate, and then they start the game, and you jump in, and it's this head-to-head, toe-to-toe thing, and I want it to happen. (laughs) That would sound so cool. Do it. Do it. Do it. From software, do it from cowards. software. <laughs> Put it in secular. No, uh, my theory, my my theory for an e league. So the the hard part for me was not just making it speed runs. <laughs> like first one to finish Dark Souls wins. I mean that we can watch that happen already. That's a thing. Um, or we just know how what it's gonna happen. It wouldn't be really super. I mean it's fun to watch a speed run, but essentially they'd all be the same because there's an optimal run path. So anyway, my theory was. Uh, and this would be a very one-off. The other ones for me are not like this from from mine. But uh, the f- at, like maybe even before the game comes out, you find you know you give your top Twitch players you know three of them uh, an advanced copy of the game, and it's like a live online streaming event where they and like a team of two other people play the game, and the winner is a combination. You have to. It's a combination of Finishing the game first, but also having the most complete and accurate uh, 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 explanation of the lore behind the game. Oh, so you're playing it while explaining you it? You are playing it. Well, uh, yes, essentially. You are playing it and doing everything. Like, you have to beat the game first or fastest or whatever. But also, at the end, you have to explain... Who are these characters? You know, just do the Dark Souls lore thing. At the end, you have to do it. You can't do it while well, you're playing. Well, sure, while you're doing it. But that might be dangerous because you don't have all the info. Anywhere. Glitches or no glitches? I, I mean, I, it's the first time you're playing the game. So, like, this this is the, the caveat. It, it it's, it's, you, Obviously, if you just do, you know, if you did this for Dark Souls 1 right now, it's not everybody knows already. Oh, You'd so have, to, have to be a this brand is a new one-off. game? The game is coming out in a month. Oh. This is an event we're doing before it comes out. I mean, it'd be spoilers, but so okay, so okay, I see what <laughs> you're saying. This is how I turn Dark Souls into a multiplayer. So you're saying E-League. this is a brand new game with yes. brand new lore and yes. brand new everything, and you want to beat the game as fast as possible, but also comprehend but also the lore. have the like most complete lore bible that you and your team of two other people uh, have com- compiled while playing the game for the first time. Oh man. I see, I'm thinking to myself, how exciting would it be to like, okay, game over now. Let's talk about the lore. Like, how excited? Like, would that be exciting to watch? I don't know. I don't know. It'd be a streaming event. It would. I mean, obviously, the whole thing's gonna take hours and hours. Right. So it's not like somebody. Well, I mean, there would be people who would sit in an arena and watch this. But oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I I don't know. I think it'd be it, it'd be an interesting. It's a one off. My other ones are much different. All but right. But that's how I turned Dark Soul, right. Dark Souls into a a, a multiplayer event. I'm hyped about all of mine. <laughs> I really no, sure. I've got some ones so. I think would be really fun. Okay, you want to go next? Uh, yes. Okay, go. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Not, well, sure, you can do multiplayer. Sure, whatever. That's fine. Whatever. But 
Tony Hawk Pro Skater, each one or two people, whatever, not a lot, but one or two people, you have one, you get a two minute run, like old school Tony Hawk. Yeah. In a random level, um, starting from a random place in the level, you run that level for two minutes and then you have to with the footage that you recorded cut and edit your own 30 second skate skate video <laughs> from that from that footage you just recorded that's pretty cool <laughs> i like because man when i was a skateboarder it was really fun like me and my friends would sit around and watch skate videos all the time we'd get oh absolutely we'd yeah. just do that and i want to see somebody basically live edit a 30 second video out of the two minutes they just ran now to make it interesting you don't know what level you're going to be in. Right. You don't know where you're going to start in that level. You don't know what your stats are going to be. You don't know, like, what your specials are. Like, you have basically randomized things so that you don't just, like, okay, I know exactly what I do with every level. I'm just going to do that this time. Like, you have to think – you have to play it on the fly and then edit it on the fly. So, so there has to be a skill level. And here's everything. kind of – so I'm taking a Premiere Pro master class right now. Sure. And uh, the way that this is working is you're provided with eight minutes of footage uh, of a camera A and camera B, two angles of an interview. So 16 total minutes, but eight minutes of camera A gotcha. and camera B. So two angles of an eight-minute eight minute interview, and then you're provided with B-reel and pictures. And he – through like the six hour class coaches you through premiere pro um and the, all the things you can do with it and how to edit a good video and i'm two hours into it and i'm like i know most of this yeah and we get anyway but right still um <clears throat> but that means you're a master you he is a lot of it is okay and at the end of this video i want you to choose whatever you want and do it however you want and the whole thing is at the end you're gonna have a unique one minute video that you have edited in any way shape or form that you want yeah and i'm actually genuinely curious to go out there and see like what did other people do how, did, how did they do decide, that what yeah. did they do? so i think that's a maybe, super cool maybe idea you're given actually, some like, like stop, i'm into this <laughs> maybe you you have the soundtrack from the game to choose from oh man you can put filters over it things like that and just then you just you have and essentially you're given the footage 20, of your run, but yeah. also given photo mode of that, so you sure. can do different angles oh, yeah. from camera pans, things like that. You uh, uh, you have a time limit on editing. You have half an hour to edit this. I'm into it. Yeah, I, I really I mean, really that's am. a unique lit thing that could be different every time. It would be, so it'd be fun to watch. Like I understand that people are invested in Overwatch, but I don't know. To me, it's just people playing Overwatch every time, like. No, I can't say that because there are great moments in each thing. But the results are generally one team wins the others. Like, you don't get something fun. To, I don't know. I think this would be unique compared to those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. My second one. Ready? Sure. This would be a pre-event for any major E-League events, eSports events. Quick draw matches. Actual quick draw matches, but mouse and keyboard. You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody else. So you're, you're facing this other person, and there's a ref in the middle that says draw, or they say time, and they're at their like last smidgen of health, and your goal is to both... It's basically the sudden death in so Smash Brothers. Like Red Dead? So Red Dead could be one of them. Like My first thought was Overwatch. Okay. This is so they're setting up all the, the computers and whatnot for Overwatch. They're getting everything ready, but everybody's shuffling in, and beforehand... They have two computers just, set up. Just real quick, like, and, fun to watch. Yeah. Okay. And the whole idea is you're in, like, a really teeny tiny small area. Okay. You're placed 10 feet away from each other, and both of you have to be have your reticle at your feet. <laughs> and then they say, draw. <laughs> and you got to, like, pan up as fast as you can, and you're picking which weapon you want to use, what you think which is going to be the fastest, yeah. the, the best, you know, the, the most range for it, and whatever else, and you're doing this huge quick draw competition <laughs> right there. That sounds fun. That'd be awesome, yeah, no, right? Yeah, it'd be, yeah. it'd be a real fun, like, pride event. Yeah. Like, I mean, and again, imagine, so if it's like Battlefield or whatever, it's going to be a little bit more normal. You're going to choose guns and things like that. But if it is Overwatch, each character is going to be entirely unique on how you do that. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be McCree because <laughs> quick Cause, draw. Cause, but yeah, still. it's high noon. But just this whole thing where, again, it's a pre-event event. You're sitting there waiting, and each thing takes 30 seconds, and they just cycle through some people for... 10 minutes while they're getting set up while they're getting prepped and they're doing these quick draw competitions and they have small prizes and things like that but quick draw competitions okay. tm des 
Yep, we're gonna make millions off of it. <laughs> well, let's call it Blizzard. My, my my last one's my mic drop one, but you, you, go, you, you give give me your last one. Okay, because I'm still working on a little bit the one I wanna the last one I wanna say. <laughs> oh no, he's about to drop the greatest. Before I before I even get this, I'll say that time. in recent years, an element of of like chance and uh, just luck has really been pushed into these games and that okay. would need to be removed entirely. It would have to go back to the first like three games. Okay. Mario Party. Oh, well, boom. Yeah, that just makes sense. Yes. Man, how much fun would that be? Yes. To watch your favorite e-leaguers play Mario Party together. And, and not just like play Mario Party together, but because first of all, it's just fun. You can't go into Mario Party expecting to be as like competitive and like you know, to teabag somebody at the end of it. Like, that's not that's not what Mario... Unless Party... they do it in real life. <laughs> you go into Mario Party expecting to have fun, have fun and, and be, be ridiculous and it's, be ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it'd be like... Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm taking this from you. No, go it's ahead. it's mine now. Yep. Uh, no, it's like watching Celebrity Jeopardy. Yes. It's not because one of them's the smartest. I mean, obviously, people are smarter than you expect. Uh, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth is apparently very, He's very smart. A genius. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's weird. But it's not about like, oh, you got to win the competition for the money because they're all playing for charity. It's more fun to just see these celebrities who you know in a certain context do a different thing. And I think, why, why isn't there the Mario, the Nintendo Mario Party E League, where they've they take some of their or even multiple. I, see, multiplayer and, games and here's what i would want to do with that is yes it'd be cool to see other e-league players come in and play mario party yeah but also its own league in which there are guys sure. who know each map in and out who know <laughs> how to like because there are ways in the old ones that you when you roll the dice you could get it pretty close to whatever number you want <laughs> so, you so can, you can it's it's difficult it was difficult right but you could make sure that you get it high like the 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 uh dice block would bob up and down oh, I see. and the higher up it was it'd be a higher number and the lower it was it'd be a lower number oh. and you could try because it's bobbing pretty fast and even then you couldn't get it pinpoint sure but to see guys that are just pros at this They're hitting supposed to be some one or two numbers there. yeah and in the first three mario parties it was all skill it was an exclusively skill-based game other than s mostly luck on the dice rolls but other than that, there was so much strategy involved. I played the crap out of those early Mario Party games on the yeah. 64. Oh, yeah. I yeah, I'm, on the 64, I played a lot. Yeah. And so to have these games and to see guys, like, strategically thinking out, like, eight turns on how they're going to do this, what mini games might pop up. Some of, like, uh, Mario Party 2 and 3 ended up with the team games where it would be two-on-two -two stuff. Like, suddenly having to work together with other people okay. just for the benefit. Or maybe you're working together with somebody who is ahead right now, and you purposely tank that round <laughs> to, to tank them. and or, or maybe they can carry you. Like, you're trying to tank, but they're so good that they still win with you trying to tank there them. There you go. Oh, man. Mario Party would be so much fun to watch. That would be, yes, that would be incredibly fun to watch. Yes. That would be a great spectator experience, yeah, I, especially again, live. Yes. Yeah. And then to, to watch these people just having fun. It's fun to watch people have fun. It really well, yeah, is. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And to watch these people just having fun and have a good time because the games are just fun. Yeah. And, man, no, nah, I'd be all about that. Doesn't, okay, bit of a tangent here. Does Nintendo have any kind of like official e-league or anything do they have any games that are nintendo games that they i would i would bet that they like disney are so protective of their ip to keep it you know, that they don't want to they would struggle with like having somebody like pewdiepie end up like uh, really putting associated the hand, putting with it their... in the hands of personalities yeah that could say anything yep and they don't want yeah like okay. winner of the of the nintendo e-league is also an immense racist yeah that's something that nintendo is really really careful with and really See, really struggle with okay maybe they okay because also here's the thing i'm gonna expand a little bit mario party is very easy for people to understand without ever having played it yep so what you do is you get your r latest disney movie stars to play Mario Party against each other. Oh man, Disney and Nintendo would both benefit so, so much. So that you from have that. like some some like a like it's not just we're not e-leaguers, right? 
but you can also make it a league where you know okay you come play a couple of times and you wouldn't maybe get all the big people but like to try to keep it a little more they're worried about their uh what do you what do you call it their persona a little bit more mm-hmm. than like their public perception of them maybe a little bit more than e-leaguers are um because it's just a different realm, but yeah, no, that'd be fun. I would watch that. I, I, yeah, I yes. would be all about a Mario Party E League, and I mean, and with that as well. But this is probably one that, if it's not already existing, it would be there. But Mario Kart was another one that I thought of, but that one seems sure. a little bit obvious to me. Well, yeah, I mean, any 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 of those Mario games, any Nintendo multiplayer game, because they're all a good combination of fun, but also you could be very competitive in them. Nah, people will kill each other in Mario Kart. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, yeah, that, that that would be more competitive than fun in a lot of really? ways. Man, but... I've always found Mario Party to me the end sh- the relationship ender more than really. More than yeah. Oh no, man, man. no, it was I a problem Mario on my Party dorm so floor much. for a while. <laughs> like people legitimately got angry, like screamed at each other <laughs> because the old the old adage is if the you know the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. So if you're doing better, then everybody's Everybody against seems you right up now. On you, yeah. Mario Party, you're always trying to win, obviously, and you're always at risk of getting hit by everything if you're in front. Whereas it can feel a lot less, it can feel a lot more personal when everybody in the game is, is trying, individually yeah, trying. Yeah, individually <laughs> trying to take you down because you're doing better. Like it's different than a race, you know. If the goal is to get in first. I don't know. It's just a, anyway. for us. We were like the the people that I played with were competitive enough with each other that if you tried to focus on anybody, that that wouldn't help you because you're actually you're... close enough to being in first. Oh, I see. That it's there's better not, just to there's focus not such on a, winning. There's not such a uh, a gap between the players. Right. Yeah. Okay. That, that would usually sense. be the case. So okay. Anyway, right. no, I'm all about a Mario Party esports league. Make it, it happen, fun. Nintendo. Yeah. Call us up. We'll we'll be your commentators. That's right. Um, my last one. All right. It's a work in progress, but all right. It's some sort of like, uh, what, what's the term for like Friday the Thirteenth that just came out a couple? Well, not just came out, but um, or or evolve or the lopsided multiplayer where you have oh, like yeah, yeah. one versus five or, yeah. but Sim City. Okay, wait. One person is the monster. You have the kaiju. several city managers try uh, over different aspects of what you can do. This this is a theory. This might not even be. Is Sim one city. person a kaiju? And one person yes! is not just a kaiju, <laughs> just disaster. They are the storm oh. that comes through and you know knocks over buildings. They are, uh, yeah, the aliens that invade. They are like, and the the city also like. I don't know. This this is a theoretical game right now because SimCity couldn't really do this. In SimCity, you just try to manage something and try no, to come oh, back. I'm, but... I'm stealing your idea. Like, yeah, you stole my mind. I'm stealing this your is a idea. Thing. Ready? SimCity, two city managers, two kaijus. Okay. One city manager, one kaiju per team. Right? So the kaiju is taking out the other team's city? No. No. Oh, okay. There are red buildings and blue buildings, <laughs> and a red kaiju and a blue kaiju, right? Yeah. So it's red and blue team. And. You are the one guy is building and trying to get a go, and it's builders versus builders, right. the best city, and then it's kaiju versus kaiju, and they're fighting in that city. <laughs> okay. And so, yes, your whole goal as so your goal as the kaiju has to be to defeat the other kaiju. That's how you win your team points. But okay. you can also tr- strategically do that by pushing them into their own buildings and things like that. <laughs> So, okay, so this is SimCity War of the Monsters edition. Yes! The PS, yes! The underrated PS2 kaiju fighting <laughs> game. Uh, yeah, I like this. It would... Man, there's so many different directions, because my other version of it was, like, you are... Okay, so... Uh, it, it's some combination of SimCity and The Sims, where you have people who are individuals living in a... Or not... not Like, you control the people, the other person controls, like, the house, or, like... Like, I don't know how that would work. but Monster House, I'm just, the, <laughs> yes. the old movie. I'm trying to come up with just how can you turn – because there's a million ways to just, like, with Farming Simulator, you can just say, well, any other simulator. Dude, the automa- what about you know, The Sims simulator. and you're just be – you have two hours, richest person out there. Go. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. Or most su- – yeah, I mean, exactly. You could do the same thing. Sim City, most successful city at the end of an hour. Be- you're given a – you know, weather, a random weather, random, mm-hmm. you know, a starting point. You have a starter city and you got to get to this or, you know, like, yeah, that's easy. I was just trying to come up with something that's 
different than that because we've already seen that simulators can work. Oh man, see, I love this idea: red team and blue team. <laughs> yeah, Kaiju, Kaiju yeah. City, Kaiju City. That's what it's called. Yes, I, Kaiju City trademark. And they're trying, like the builders are trying to build a strong, structurally sound city, and right. they're like, there are kaiju resistant or maybe laser resistant buildings that you can build. Okay, so at the end of the day, though. The winning team is the one with who... No, no. So at the end of the day, the kaiju fight are rated on their own things. Right. The builders are rated on their own yes. things. And then they combine their scores. And then you have an average. Into, yeah, into an overall so, score. So technically, the best city with the best kaiju fighter is the winner. Yes. Yeah, I love it. That would be amazing. Yep, we're going to make TM, it happen. TM, we're going to make TM. it happen. <laughs> Dang it. Every single time we talk about things in this era, we have such good ideas. But also, I wonder if it's kind of like when you are like high and you think your ideas are amazing. Because we're just like feeding off of each other right now. <laughs> yes, this is great. It cannot be bad. And then we go tell somebody and they're like, yeah, there's so many things like that wouldn't work about that. And you're like, Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, thank you for listening. <laughs> Let us know what e you what game you think would be an incredible esports game, or you, maybe even just a ridiculous one. Right. Let us know what you think about the farming simulator esports league, and are you interested in that? Yes or no? Are you gonna farm? And. Let us know which of our six ideas you think is the best. Yeah. Uh, join our Patreon to fund one of these ideas. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> thank you guys for listening. We appreciate your support. As always, if you were to go in and like this or share this or even rate us on whatever podcast whatever aggregator you're, you're listening on, this yeah. on, it actually really helps us get out there. So we appreciate when you guys do that. Uh, you guys are amazing. And always remember that saved games save lives. See you next week.